welcome to the Nerd Party. Hello and welcome to another episode of Missing Frames. This is the podcast where we watch all the movies we should have seen by this point in our lives. I'm your host, Sean Eastridge. We're hanging out on the Nerd Party Network, a collection of podcasts dedicated to all things entertainment. Check it out at thenerdparty.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Join Nerd Party, like the Facebook page, and follow the Instagram. It's just at the Nerd Party. And I am so excited to welcome back for his first episode in the new year, John Mills. And this is the first one in a while. So, John, I'm I'm very happy to be reunited with you. Thank you for coming on. I am extremely happy to be back. I think this is the first time I've been here since I shamed Brad for liking Halloween 3, <laughs> if I recall. So it was shout it out was, to Brad Gullickson. It shout out to Brad. Uh I think it may have been Black Christmas. Did we do Black Christmas after that? Oh, you're right. Yeah, we did do Black Christmas after How could that. Did you forget? You're absolutely How could you right. forget? Well, the movie I didn't forget. It was our encounter because all of them are so memorable that they just combine together into a uh, goulash, if you will. A single, of, uh, a single inter- nightmarish, just formless blob <laughs> that haunts you and your dreams for, for all eternity. Yeah, that's that's the that, that's the phrase I was looking for. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is technically. I mean, it's been a while since I introduced you to a movie because this is another movie that you are introducing to me, and technically yes. you didn't. You did not introduce me to Halloween three. I don't. That would not have been of your choosing. Should uh, that Correct. that have been an option? Um, but you did choose Black Christmas, which was great. And now you're choosing another film. And John, what is that film? Carlito's Way from Brian De Palma and starring Al Pacino and Sean Penn and Penelope Ann Miller. And actually a few other names that you will recognize uh, as you go along and you will say, oh, my gosh, that guy or that girl, they were really destined for greatness. Like that guy Palma, is a, a guy that yeah, I've, well, I've seen in something. Right. Oh, no, trust me. There are going to be some people that you see where you say, oh, my gosh. And it's obvious they're just starting out. But De Palma has always been gr- he's had a great eye for casting since the start and mm. just. It, you know, Carlito's Way is is just one of those movies where the, the cast is perfect. Sean, okay, this might build it up a little bit, but can you just say Sean is perfect? I know you're talking about Sean Penn, but if I could just get a sound bite that I can no, isolate that's him. never that's never going to happen, not at all. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, sorry, sorry. It's not Christmas anymore. We'll have to wait till next <sighs> Christmas to try to trap me all into right, that one. All right, all right. But uh, yeah, no, like Sean Penn, he gives such an incredible performance in this. People talked about it regardless of what they thought of the movie this this is one of those movies where it's been a long time since i've seen sean penn in a movie but every so he's always been a talented actor but every so often he rolls out one of those performances where you just lose him and you think to yourself at the end oh that's right that was sean penn he's so good in this movie he's so incredibly good and I don't want to, I mean, the thing is, I'm sitting here saying I don't want to build it up too much, and I've built it up too much now, but trust me, (laughs) Sean Penn is Kleinfeld. My brother and I still make reference to him to this day. Well, it's not even you, because Carlito's Way is one that I've been told by multiple people. I think even my wife, Sarah, we own this movie, I'm pretty sure, and she's been like, oh, you've got to watch it, you've got to watch it, and I know, you know, it's, it's, a classic people have been talking about it for a while. And frankly, I was thinking about it. And as far as Brian De Palma goes, I'm pretty uh, uneducated in that realm. I think the only Brian De Palma films I've seen are Carrie and the first mission impossible. (laughs) I don't think I've seen anything else. So Carlito's way uh, has been relatively hyped for me and I'm excited to watch it strictly so I can check another De Palma film off my list, but also I, I I just, I, I couldn't tell you anything about it other than it was Al Pacino. I didn't even know Sean Penn was in it. And I know it's probably crime genre. Like that's likely, but yes. uh, I, yes, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's based on, I, I forget the name of the, I forget the name of the book I'm gonna, because I'm I haven't take a read wild it. Guess. I'm going to say Carlita's way. No, actually, that's not the name of the book. Um, it, it's some other name, but the Carlito is a character in it, and it was written by 
uh, I think it was Edwin Torres, I think is the name. Um, but I yes, think he was that's like, that's right. So, yeah. okay. So it's based on Carlito's way and after hours by after Edwin hours. Torres. That's, that's the one. Yeah. But so we were both right. I just want to point that out. Oh. It happens on occasion. It happens <laughs> so I, so occasion. you haven't read the book, but no. this is, do you remember seeing the film? Like, did you see it in theaters? Like oh, yeah. what was your first experience with it? Yeah. I'm, I'm the, uh, I'm the old man, um, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, I saw this in the theaters. My my older brother and I went to go see it because it was Al Pacino. I mean, you know, we're, you know, at that, especially at that time, we're huge Al Pacino fans. We'll go see anything with Al Pacino. I think this was the first film of his that got released after Scent of a Woman, which okay. he won the Oscar for. And was was that his first Oscar win? Yes, I believe it was, which is sort of a crime in and of itself. <laughs> Because the previous year to that, he'd been nominated for Ricky Roma in Glengarry Glen Ross, and how you don't give him the award completely blows my mind. He did not win for The Godfather Part Two, mm. and he did not win for Scarface. I mean, come on. And he, uh, I don't think he was even nominated for Scarface, actually. But um, no, he, he, he was like the Susan Lucci of the Oscars. He was even, he was even nominated for The Godfather Part Three uh, for his role as Michael Corleone in that and uh, oh, wow. didn't win. Yeah, and did De Palma did Scarface too, didn't he? Yes, and I yes. haven't seen that either. Oh, am, that's, am I that's making? Are we making a mistake doing this instead of Scarface? Like, do you no, think this is the no. better of the two? Because Scarface mm. is a film I hear its reputation. It it's almost a little bit more of a cult classic. Like people kind of like, oh yeah, Scarface. It's got like the say hello to my little friend, but it's not necessarily everyone's favorite movie but it's one of those that like oh yeah you should see that at some point scarface is powered by pacino right it, it, it's it's a pacino spotlight movie it's him and you watch it for him and you watch it for his affectations and his you know tony montana you know and just mm. you watch it for that it's a good movie it's a very entertaining movie the ending kind of falls apart in it and I imagine there's some Scarface fan like tearing their hair out. No, <laughs> but the ending kind of falls apart in Scarface. There are a couple of things too, where um, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if somebody pulled the cancel wagon up to Scarface at some point. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you have like Robert Loja playing a, a Cuban drug Lord or something like that. And it's like, that's interesting casting. <laughs> um, so, you know, <laughs> so Carlito's way, definitely the right choice. I'd say. Uh, you know, I, I'll be interested for your take on it because I okay. doubt, I doubt that nearly as many people have seen Carlito's way as have seen Scarface. You don't have Carlito's way on right. t-shirts and stuff like right. that. And it, Carlito's way is a very interesting movie because of the, it's very like, it would be a very interesting sort of double feature because De Palma, I think goes through phases like any filmmaker does. And you can see in Scarface that it's sort of a a glorifying sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Tony Montana's a bad guy, but he's a bad guy you love to watch sort of thing. Right. Whereas this is very much more rooted in a real world look at what mm. crime does and what – now, I'm, I'm not saying it's it's a gritty documentary sort of thing. There's obviously fantastical elements to it, but – it's very obviously based on source material that was drawn from real life, sort of like watching an episode of The Wire. Gotcha. Okay. These events did not happen, but you can tell that somebody who knew what the real world was like wrote something having to do with it sort of thing. So does, where does this rank with De Palma films for you? Is it a favorite? Yeah. I mean, Carlito's Way is a touchstone for me. I, but the thing is, I will cop to I don't know De Palma movies incredibly mm -hmm. well. Uh, I know I've seen Scarface. I've seen Carrie. I've never seen Dress to Kill. I've seen Sisters uh, with Margot Kidder. And I've seen Carlito's Way. I've seen Mission Impossible. I never saw the Mars see, one. You've definitely seen. Oh, I saw that. Never mind. I have seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> that one was. I oh. knew that one was bad when it came out. And I was maybe 11 years old. That was when Batman and Robin and Lost in Space were my favorite films. So if I didn't <laughs> like a film back then, you know it's bad. <laughs> uh, no. And I also saw um, uh, Raising Cain with, uh, with John Lithgow. I haven't seen that one either. So yeah, well, it's you've seen really more than I have. One. So you have the yep. thing about De Palma that people harp on a little bit, which again, having only seen two oh, of his films, I and the Untouchables. I'm sorry, I forgot about the Untouchables. I have he seen that as well. And uh, so okay, so Untouchables is another one that uh, I've seen. So 
that and it's it's been years i almost like i that could be a missing frame just because i can only remember certain moments from it but de palma what people tend to harp on with him is that his style is almost like he's always overtly paying homage to somebody else and you can kind of see that in the fact that Mm. like oh the untouchables is a remake scarface is a remake Uh, mission impossible it's a tv show and he's very clearly doing this kind of so people have almost held that against him but i've got to say i mean at least of these films that you've named and the ones that i forgot that i've seen i i still do get the sense of like him having a style all his own even if it's an adaptation of many other styles so i don't know what do you think about that criticism and i want i'm curious to see if that's something in carlito's way that comes into play i would say that de palma does very obvious homage but i can watch a de palma movie and know i'm watching a de palma movie as opposed to and i hope i don't anger anybody i'm not trying to say anything hurtful when i watch a jj abrams movie which sure. is it's really it's really super polished and sort sort of things it's like oh i'm watching spielberg's nephew make a movie yeah. sort of thing like de palma at least you know i mean what that doesn't come into i don't recall it's been a long time since i saw it I don't recall it coming into play in Carlito's way, but like De Palma did some insane stuff with split screen. Um, I remember that in Carrie. That's one of the things that stands out in my memory is the whole, know, the whole prom sequence at the end. And I do, I do very much encourage you to watch, uh, not watch, to read Paul Hirsch's book uh, a long time ago in a cutting room far, far away. Okay. Cause he talks about, cause he cut Carrie and he talks about how, there were certain technical challenges because they shot stuff with lights in frame because De Palma just said, Oh, we're just going to cut the picture. And then it tested poorly. And so they had to go back and like pull all of these other shots. And, you know, Hirsch is like the camera setup is in frame. I, what am I supposed (laughs) to do? Um, But that's very, very true. I, I do get the sense of De Palma as uh there you're right like jj i love jj abrams but i do get what you're saying like it's very much like sometimes you wonder is abrams doing his own thing or is he just doing spielberg or is he just doing that like so i do agree de palma feels like oh yeah de palma one of the the great directors through the the 80s like the late 70s and the 80s so i um yeah this is one i am excited for i and like i said i i don't I don't know anything about it. Those are the things I know. Like, if I were to guess what this movie was about, uh, it's about a guy named Carlito, and he's got a way about him. And what kind of way is that? Or maybe Carlito's yeah. way is like a, a, a street he grew up on. Like, it's like a, a childhood. Like, oh, <laughs> yes. Carlito's yeah. way. If he's only I could go back there, go back to that innocence. <laughs> well, now I'm a, a crime lord or I'm a, I'm a gangster. Yes. and. And and it and it, uh, it 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 lap dissolves back, and you see a doo wop group singing yes. over a roaring fire in a trash can. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm picturing as Carlito's way. But no, I am I am generally excited uh, to watch it because again, this has been one I've been needing to check off my list for a while. Fun, wh- one last fun trivia note I'll throw out there to you is if you look at the poster for Carlito's Way, uh, the shot of Pacino the, the in silhouette. silhouette one? Yeah. Yeah. In silhouette, the way his head is canted, if you zoom in on that, it looks pretty much exactly like the poster of Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So by that point, De Palma was basically just paying homage to himself. Yes. The snake eats its own. The snake eats its own tail at some point. (laughs) That's so. perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm ready to watch this. What do you say? Let's get to it. We'll be back to discuss it. So stay tuned, people. Now available to own on video cassette. All right, we're back. John, I really enjoyed carlito's way with some caveats i want to discuss them with you but overall i uh i enjoyed it i was entertained i marveled at just brian de palma's true brilliance as a filmmaker the guy knows how to craft suspense like it really is impressive i i love uh, there's so many scenes i loved in this movie that i want to talk about 
Um, Al Pacino was was great, which was I expected as much. Sean Penn, as you said, was great. I think John Leguizamo may have been the standout for me. Oh, even yeah. Though he's not on screen as much as them, he stands out and he sticks in your mind. But uh, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it overall. I, I have some beefs with it, but but I did have a good time watching it. Uh, I definitely, uh, you know, this uh, this was my first time re- revisiting it in a while, and I even though I knew it was coming, I just I, I loved. It. I was waiting for it. Dave. You killed us, man! Like <laughs> that scene, that boat scene is still so into. I know what's coming, and it's just yes. like, oh, geez! Like I remember writhing in the theater, and when he hits the mob guy for the first time, just that. I remember seeing this in the theater with my brother and both of us were like, Oh no. Like we knew we were like, Oh, that's bad. Don't, don't do that. You know, if, if there's something at the core of my complaints about it, and maybe this is the point because I mean, the movie opens pretty boldly with just like, Oh, he dies. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Carlito dies. Charlie dies. He's going to get shot. We don't know when we don't know what are the circumstances, but we, can assume he's going to die so maybe this is the point part of i think what what bothered me about the movie and bothers a strong word but i think one of the things that kept me from really loving it was the fact that i felt like of course they're gonna of course something's gonna go wrong this guy sean penn is so sleazy i know what's going on here i know that kleinfeld is gonna do something stupid you just know it and i felt like the movie itself maybe through that opening scene to Palma saying, I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I'm not trying to do anything to shock you or surprise you in a way that's going to like, Oh my God, I didn't see that coming. I felt like I could have called every plot point in the movie, including that. That being said, like I mentioned, I think that might've been the point. I think that by opening the film with Mm -hmm. that scene, you are kind of saying like, you're kind of going to know where this is going, but like, let's see if we can offer a fresh take on some of these kind of more cliche ideas like the guy i'm, I'm quitting i'm i'm going right. good i'm going to i'm going to be good i'm going to abandon my my crime ridden ways and the buddy who's a lawyer kind of a corrupt lawyer who's like oh you know this guy's no good but they're buddies and you know something bad's going to happen the love story that you know it's going to end in heartbreak and it, there's a lot of that stuff here but like de palma and the performances he gets there's a there is a sense of maybe not freshness to it, but fun. Like it's like, it's fun to watch and it's twisty and they're, they, everyone involved seems to be having a blast. So it does make it enjoyable to watch at least. I I think that the, the key is yes, you're right. De Palma knows that he's dealing with a story that is the, the typical tragic arc of the guy who's trying to reform his life. He can't escape no matter what he tries to do. And, so yes, he commits. I think that what really the key with a movie like this working is the script. And I think that this script is so tightly written that it leans into De Palma's strengths, which are pacing and editing, which, you know, not to mention, I mean, you know, there's always some really interesting camera work in De Palma's movies. Yeah. And just the, just even the, the opening that you're talking about, where the camera is just doing that slow, you know, tilt up and around. And it's like, and then it goes upside down to, so that it can come back around and twist up and come back to Charlie's face. And it's like, it's one of those things where you're in it in the moment and you're like, oh, okay, I see it. It's like a spirit is floating around and everything. But then you take a second and you say, how did they pull that one off really? Because, and especially this is pre CG camera moves and everything. It's is there an edit I missed somewhere in here? Because this camera movement is really interesting and weird. And was the guy standing on the side was but and also just the take of how everybody looks like it's a funeral procession behind him. And, you know, complete with the morning wife and all of that. Like, I, I think it's a really beautiful way to start. I, I remember the first time I saw it, I was so involved that by the end of it, when he gets shot again, it was more of a, Oh, that's right. He gets shot. Yeah. You know? Um, but I do, I do. You mentioned Leguizamo and Leguizamo comes after, I believe this was his first film. Um, because in the credits it says introducing, and then there was a name and then Leguizamo was the name after that. 
So I don't know if the introducing carries over to him as well. Well, um, it, it it may have been his first film. Definitely not his best film, which would have to be Super Mario Brothers. I believe was wait, released the okay, same okay. year. Hold on, you you you're gonna say that when uh, Spawn is sitting out there? That's, that's true. just that's, that's true. crazy no, talk. You, you have I stand corrected. Well, yes, Leguizamo's performance as the the evil clown in Spawn is just something that stays with you years and you years later. You can definitely see the seeds of that performance here in <laughs> Carlito's way. But my brother and I still to this day is a Benny Blanco from the Bronx. You know, like it, he plays such a good, um, weaselly little. It's like, yeah. That slimy guy, guy who it's yeah. like, Oh, this new guy. It's like, he's the new, the new freshness. Like Pacino's on his way out. Carlito's on his way yeah. out. He's like, no, I'm done. I've seen this world. I don't have, and I don't like where it's going. I don't like this up and coming generation. They don't got no respect. They don't have any class. Mm-hmm. Like they're just sleazy guys. And Leguizamo is just kind of the perfect encapsulation of that. Like he just completely, like everything about Benny Blanco just sort of drips that sleaze of like, yeah, I don't really want to be a part of that yep. world either. Like it's icky. Like it's kind of like, Maybe like The Sopranos, which I still need to, I, I've seen the first season and I need to watch the entire series, but Sopranos is almost like a deconstruction of the idealized world of the Godfather. Like, ah, the mob, right. when it had honor, the mafia had honor. I feel like uh, if if Carlito is a part of that world, then Benny is like uh, 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 Andy Garcia in Godfather Part 3, where he's just like violent and brash and just doesn't right. care. But that, but that in and of itself is interesting too, right? Is because somebody calls out the fact that Carlito has lost his edge. He he should know to keep an eye. Like he's supposed to kill Benny Blanco when they have their first confrontation, and the voiceover even says he's like, "Hey, you know, I know I'm supposed to." And he goes, "But I, you know, I, I'm not. I can't anymore. I just, I, I don't know what's changed, right?" And that's sort of like he needs to get out of Dodge right there. He needs to just leave because he obviously cannot exist in this world anymore. Um, and it's it's interesting, too, because I think one of the performances that gets sort of overlooked is um, uh, Louis Guzman mm. um, uh, as Pachanko, his, you know, his little right hand guy. He's so good and so sleazy and also his physicality is so perfect for that rat of a guy yeah. that's just waiting. He, his allegiance means nothing. Yes. Sort of he's thing. waiting for his moment. It's like, where's, where's the money over here? All right. Right. And just from the first moment you meet him, when Carlito's walking back through the old barrio and he comes up to him and he's like instantly glomming on to Carlito, you know, and trying to, prove that he's you know he he hey he's an up-and-comer too he can he can hang with carlito and um i i wanted to ask you because you mentioned the you know the build-up of tension and everything and i agree with you i think that that de palma is one of the best when he's on his game and i wanted to ask you what you thought about the pool yes trick like that first scene i remember seeing it for the first time and like it was crazy because you well, knew that was, what was that was go really. I mean, that was the first point where I was like, "Oh yeah, okay, great. It's a De Palma film. This is this is like you should teach that scene, yeah, in film school. Like, how do you craft suspense using the camera, using the editing? Like, it is so, it is such a so dependent on De Palma's skill." And the skill of his DP, uh, is, I think it's Stephen H. Burham. I remember uh, I was reading something about how originally the execs wanted that scene cut down. They were like, it's too long. It's going on too long. It's It doesn't work. And so De Palma, what he did is he recut it. And it actually, I think he actually made it longer. But what he did is he cut it in a way, crafting it in the editing room to like have that sense of suspense. And when they re-showed it, when they screened it again for the execs, the execs were like, Oh, this is great. You cut it down. It's perfect. That he didn't, he was like, yeah, yeah, cut it down. He didn't cut it down at all, but just through the <laughs> sheer ability yeah. of him, his editor, and just the, the, what they pulled off, he was able to make the execs think it was shorter simply because of the way he crafts the tension, but it's so good. Cause you, 
Mm-hmm. You have, I love Pacino, like just following him around the table as he's moving around the table yep. and the way it's like nothing overtly suspenseful is happening. You know, something bad's about to go down, but it's all in the suggestiveness of the camera and the editing. And it's all in like De Palma does this really well. And Mission Impossible is the, the film of his I'm most familiar with because I love that series. And I, I saw that when I was a kid and I've seen it so many times, mm-hmm. but you know, it, you get a sense of that in Mission Impossible. Like it's an extent, that movie is basically all suspense. It's not really an action movie. And you see it, it that was the next film he did after this, I believe, right? This was 93 and that was mm-hmm. 96. Yeah, I think so. I think, there's, I think it must have been. So it's I like so. watching it and thinking of that, like, oh, you see how Carlito's way is a con- another step to Mission Impossible. And and that I, that was the first scene that I was really like, oh yeah, this is, this is just great filmmaking and uh, one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I just love that so much. Well, just the, just down to the set design of the room being this blood red. Yes. And Carly, Carlito, like what's frustrating for me is Pacino picked his projects in such a way that it still annoys me that, we get this incredible performance in Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Then we have scent of a woman that the public goes nuts for. And it's like, it's, it's a fine performance, but that's the one he wins an award for. And I look at it bracketed by Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross and this, and I'm like, the only thing I can think is either one of these performances is the award winner. Because, and simply because of that scene where he first sits down and notices the bathroom door, the way that Pacino sits down and like his whole butt, like he's, he is just a master at, at the game at that point. Yeah. And seeing the way his eyes move and his head goes rigid and the way he's communicating, like that's the first telegraph of Carlito knows everything that's about to happen. And he's just yes. doing anything possible to try to get out of it. And yeah. it's, it's really, it's really crazy because that scene too, where he, uh, you know, when he's in the bathroom and he's like, all right, I'm coming out. And you know, he has a dry gun. (laughs) It's just so funny. And and I know we talked about it before and I still, you know, I haven't seen Scarface, but I wondered, there's a part of me that wondered if there was a little bit of a, you can't, De Palma can't work with Pacino again and not have, a little homage to Scarface. So I wondered if there was a sense of, like, huh. oh, I'm coming out like just that. It, but he's totally like, whereas Scarface, as I understand it, and that he's just a, like total insane crime Lord will take everybody out in yes. Carlito's way. As you, you already told me uh, in the before part portion of this episode, it's, it's almost the polar opposite where he's just always like, in over his head or like, I don't want to be here. This is not my world anymore, but constantly kind of get it. Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in like that kind of thing. So I wondered if that moment was kind of yeah. almost maybe in a playful way, him sort of teasing the Scarface mentality of like, Oh, he, now he's not really the action hero anymore. He's just like a desperate guy trying not to get killed. Who's caught up with Kleinfeld, who is, an amazing performance from Sean Penn and supposedly based on Alan Dershowitz of the era. Um, (laughs) I don't know. I'm not making any accusations at all whatsoever, but supposedly he's based on that character because if I remember correctly, Edward Torres did time as a judge, I think, or something like that. And Mm -hmm. so might've based the character, um, after him. But, uh, Every scene, especially revisiting it, I think that there's something interesting to be said for the fact that Carlito's downfall is his loyalty, and in specific, of course, to to Kleinfeld, where it's like there's this really interesting examination of like everybody loves to, you know, throw around the new terms and everything, the toxic masculinity, stuff like that. But like this sort of, you know bond of brothers that is so easily manipulated by somebody like Kleinfeld. Mm. He knows Carlito's going to help him out and he shouldn't be asking. And it's like, it's just that sort of 
awful friendship where it's like that's that's yeah. the thing that gets him killed, right? If he yeah. if he never does that, he finds a way out, right? It takes right. a little bit longer, but he finds a way out, and it's just there was, sad. You know, one of the things that didn't fully work for me was their relationship. Not the performances, but like I I – it was hard for me to invest in that relationship because I mm. think we don't get to see enough of them being like the ideal version of that friendship. I guess we know that they're buddies and we get the, you know, he gets them out of jail. Of course, like they go and they celebrate. I don't know if it was just something misfiring between them because both of them are good. I don't know if it was, this, was the script. It might've been the script, but it just felt like because I know Kleinfeld is, is not a good guy. And we see, unfortunately, just I, I, I almost didn't trust him from the beginning. And so when mm-hmm. he's finally betrayed Carlito, it almost felt inevitable. And I didn't feel that as an emotional blow, if that's what the film was going for, if that's what Kep was going for in his script. Abs- absolutely. I, I agree with you that if there's a shortcoming, it's that some of the heavier emotional moments don't hit the way that they should. Right. Absolutely agree with you there. I like I want to make as many excuses as I can because it's like, well, you know, you he says in the voiceover he's known him since he first got out of law school and all of that sort. But to your point, no, you don't see enough like you see that scene where they're they're loving. It's a lot of telling instead of like it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're best friends. And I'm like, but I don't know if I believe that because I'm not seeing a whole lot of evidence because a lot of it is just like. Kleinfeld being desperate and like getting upset and like being like, yo, why, why don't you go like your girl's dancing with that other guy? Like just being a, kind of a dick. So it's kind of like, why yeah. does Carlito hang out with this guy? I know he says they're friends and I know that Kleinfeld got him out of jail, but, and, and you know, again, Sean Penn is so good. Like you just mm-hmm. kind of, he's one of those guys you sort of, you're drawn to, even though you're like, I don't particularly like this guy. Um, the performance is so good. Yeah. But you're like, it is that it is that sense of like, you're telling me, but I don't know that I fully see it. And then when he's betrayed later on, I'm like, I, yeah, that I do see. Like, it makes sense that he would do that. I don't know that I see it as as deep of a betrayal or as like you said, as an emotional betrayal, because I didn't quite get the vibe of these guys ever being besties. Yeah, I like I, I guess it is, you know, I, I mean, you can make as many excuses as you want, but. Uh, the 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 fact is that it it doesn't land the way that it should when although i think it's incredibly slick the way that they put it together when he's stolen the bullets from the gun and the camera does this thing where it just i think in a in a, a different director's hands you see him dump the bullets immediately when he leaves the room whereas that is such a that is yeah. that is one of my favorite moments in the entire film it's such a great that moment made it almost made like it sold that whole thing for me because again yeah. i was kind of like ah whatever but when carlito gets the upper hand at the end and gets and kleinfeld gets his comeuppance through that moment and again it's in the editing it's in the the way i love the guy walks into the room like you know my my i think he says my father says hi my brother says hi Whatever it is, but the can- as soon as the guy in the policeman yep. garb comes in the room and it goes into a Dutch angle, and then you're like, "Oh, we know what's going on here." Yep. I just love the way you know it slows down, and again, De Palma is so good at this. Everything slows down. You're cutting back and forth, and then you have the click of the gun, and then you cut to Carlito in the alleyway with the bullets, and it's just like it is. It is yep. such masterful filmmaking. Again, I would that sequence maybe like you know even not just from a, a directing standpoint but from an editing standpoint like how do you craft tension and that moment those moments in particular i think the moments where de palma is really like it's not dialogue driven it's not driven by what the characters are are saying or what they're doing it's more like when de palma can just really go into the realm of the visual and the the completely cinematic when it's not about like again what's being said but how it's being shown and that is such a perfect example. The mm-hmm. final, the foot chase at the end is a great example. Um, and the, the, the yeah. uh, pool bar scene is a great example as well. I think a, a lot of times when it starts to get into like the dialogue and stuff like that, it gets a little clunky, but when it turns into cinema, those moments are so like, they're 
like I said, they should be taught in film school because they're so excellent. And DePaul yeah. is just on top of his game. Yeah, the 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 train station chase, I will not, like. I it's just so wonderful. And to your point about it, it feel you can look at it as he's warming up for Mission Impossible in a way. Yes, because that whole sequence up to and including the using the camera to show you just as much as you need to see and doing it in such a way it's hard to describe like it's hard to describe how he moves the camera there where it's an acknowledgement of the fact that he's hiding things from you it's well, like the he, escalator the escalator right. shot just like that moment and the way but, he cuts it all together but but it's like he's taunting you yeah. it's like he's taunting you where he's like we both know i'm covering something up can you figure out what I'm co- what I'm going to show when I pull the curtain back sort of thing? And yeah. that so so that's such a great payoff when Carly. I remember seeing that for the first time, too. It's such a great payoff when he's coming down the escalator and he looks up and he sees the big guy yeah. through the window. <laughs> and just that moment of, ah, oh, geez, you know, like so <laughs> yeah. close. It's it's great. And I look I mean, De Palma. And again, it's it's these this great instinct to have these single shots. And I don't know enough about De Palma's filmography. I can't even, again, I can't think of specific examples in Mission Impossible, but he does a lot of wonders and he does it a lot in the club. So you do a lot of POV shots of like, oh, here's Carlito mm-hmm. going in and talking to people. And then it's like, all of a sudden we're going into another room or we're going up to the second floor. And it's just like these continuous takes, but it really puts you in the headspace. But also De Palma knows how to frame these shots and working with his DP, just like the lighting and like the sense of energy in those club scenes. But also you have the hospital scene where the we see Carlito leave and the policemen show or the policemen, quote unquote, show up. Mm-hmm. And like it's all done continuously. Like it's like you have the guy show up. He walks in a frame. He looks down the hallway. You turn and you see Al Pacino walking away and then you turn back to the guy. It's just like it is. It's so those are the moments to me that really stand out is when De Palma is really just like basking in his ability to tell visual a visual story and how he, like you said little hints mm-hmm. and things that like would, is the audience aware like do the does the audience know and the the trick of like oh the gun's empty because we never we never knew that and just like yeah. carlito trick kleinfeld we are we the audience are tricked as well and the way it pays off and the way that information is revealed to us i love that and i love I, again it, it's it's a film that it's funny that I, I don't think De Palma wanted to do it at first because it was like, I already did a crime movie with Al Pacino. I don't really want to do this again, but you, it, it is made mm-hmm. with such zest and energy that like, I, I never got this. I, I never get the sense of him not being into it once you're watching it. Yeah. I, I think that um, I think De Palma always commits regardless of what you think of the the final product he always goes into it like it's he is fully in there and uh, you know as much as we're singing the praises of Pacino and uh Penn and De Palma and the crew i think somebody who sometimes gets overlooked and i i don't i don't know if i had ever seen her in anything before this film uh but Penelope Ann Miller i think is she is, in kindergarten cop i i have she to admit, is. i don't, okay, I don't remember where, kindergarten cop that's well. where, that well trust me i remember kindergarten <laughs> cop if there's it's anyone not in a the world, <laughs> she is the uh the love interest in that that's what i remember her from oh really oh okay yes. all right well definitely her I, peak i will say that uh this is a very memorable performance i i really think that she gives the heart to the movie um and I mean that in a very good way. Like she yeah. really is. But again, to your point about some of the emotional stuff, not necessarily firing. There are a couple it, of yeah, moments it, where I feel like I should have been teary when she's having it out with, with Charlie, but I'm not, I'm like, okay, I just know how this conversation is going to go. It doesn't, the movie just isn't good. The script just isn't great at selling those emotional beats. And it, it part of it may be De Palma's style. Like he, in a way, the technique, because it's like, this is going to sound weird because it's a film. So of course it should feel like you're watching a film, but sometimes it feels like De De Palma is so interested in 
showing like, yes, this is cinema. And this is like, look at all the cool stuff we can do with this medium that it, he almost forgets to like hone in on the emotions. Like Patrick Doyle, his yes. score is amazing. It's great. It's bombastic it and it's exciting, but it sometimes the, it almost hits the emotional beats too melodramatically. And so it's kind of like, it, mm-hmm. am I supposed to be invested in this? Cause it feels Phony is a, the mean way. It, it almost feels a little phony in a way, if that makes sense. It's a little too stylized at points so that with things like the relationship between Charlie and Gail, you do kind of feel like you're at arm's length. Or that's how I felt, at least. Well, there's a really interesting moment when they're having their big fallout in in the apartment. And I took it as they're communicating distance, but I just thought it wasn't it wasn't as effective as maybe they wanted. And maybe it's that Amazon was showing it in the wrong aspect ratio, but it didn't feel like that. But um, there's one point where as the argument is, is ramping up after Kleinfeld has said, you know, do you get sick on boats sort of thing? Um, She comes out and she's arguing, she's on screen, right? And she's arguing and he's not in the shot. Mm. It's just her on screen right and yeah and it's in right. the apartment and then it cuts and then he's on the left and i'm that's at that moment i was like that can't be right that's got to well, be some sort like, of a de- an error like look at the look at now let's look at an opposite scene the scene where he comes up to her apartment and she's like you better break down this door yeah and you get the sense of de palma loving that and the way he crafts that love scene where he finally breaks in and then you have one of my favorite lines in the movie where it's like charlie Where's my cheesecake? Or what was the line? Yeah, where's my line? Yeah, where's my cheesecake? Yeah. Where's my cheesecake? I love that line so much. But like the way like you look at how just the straight dialogue scenes are played visually, you get the yeah. sense that De Palma's almost bored with those moments. Like it's like, oh, let's get I'm done with the talking. Let's like let's get to the point where we can convey the emotions via the camera, the action. editing. Like yeah. when he gets into like, yeah, the action, when it gets into like, all right, now it's pure cinema. I think he gets really excited by that. And to your point, the the moments where it's like the characters are talking about how they're feeling and it's not necessarily the most profound or well-written dialogue. So it kind of feels a little melodramatic and soap opera-esque. But then you look at that love scene where he breaks down the door and the camera's spinning around them and it's and it ends with that great punchline. You see the difference. And it, again, it hinges on like, De Palma feeling maybe that he could do more with that scene visually than he could with just a straightforward, like I'm angry and now we're upset at each other. Now, see, the thing is that you, you've hit on the script and I don't think it's the best script that's ever been written, but I, I actually think it's a good script. I think that this is a good foundation. I think that if there are flaws, I think they're brought about by De Palma because of what you're talking about. I think that Mm. a script is solid, like they're saying the right things, the setups are correct, and it's like after a certain point, the script is delivered, and it's like, okay, you're the director, you know what to do with these words on a page, whereas I think what you're hitting on is that the words are not, you know, to to your point with the punchline, where's my cheesecake is a great line, and it's a great moment, and all of these sorts of things, but there's also later a very important argument that the two of them are having, and we need to handle that with as much verve and it's not what you know what they're saying isn't necessarily wrong and that even has a well-staged moment when he you know when he punches the mirror when he like just snaps sort of thing that's shot pretty well and it's 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 so incongruous because it's like okay this is the same script and these are the same actors you're much more interested in this moment than you were in the moment that's a really good point that's a really good point. And maybe it, it, I mean, it has to speak to De Palma. At the end of the day, he's responsible for what we're seeing on screen. So maybe yeah. it is. It's, I, I agree with you. I think Penelope Ann Miller is really good in the movie. And I think maybe it, based on just the way those scenes tend to play out, um, but, you know, then I think of, like, the, the strip scene and the dancing scenes and, like, again, the visual scenes. But, like, the domestic argument scenes, De Palma is clearly like, eh, I don't care. Just put yeah. the camera there. Unless it's He just doesn't see I, – I get the sense that, I, like you're saying, that may have worked better in another director's hands. Like, somebody who really is interested in, like, crafting those dialogue scenes and working with the actors to get, like, let's really boil it down. But, like – I think De Palma with this was like really going for bombast in a way. And I think he saw those moments as almost yeah. a little too soap opera opera esque. And he just kind of 
to you you almost get the sense you know i say that he's really passionate and excited and i believe he is overall carlito's way is the work of a passionate filmmaker and somebody who is clearly like executing certain sequences really well but i think if you were to point to anything that he, you feel like he's weary or he's like ah i'm not into it it's the love story stuff specifically the domestic stuff when they're together and i it, part yeah. of me wonders you know the, the, the Speaking of the script, which I agree it's a good script, I I think maybe it just feels like it's trying to cover too much ground. Like it, between the love story mm. and the guy trying to make it get out of the crime world, but also he's betrayed by his friend. And also there's this other guy who's the young upcoming guy who's going to kill him later on. In the, there's like a lot of stuff going on. And I wonder if it was just like something had to fall by the wayside at the end of the day. And that's the mm-hmm. love story seems to be it. Yeah. That, and the thing is, and this is, I don't necessarily want to go into, like, I'm not offering any sort of deep criticism and I'm not offering any sort of insight or, or anything like that, that anybody should read into, but uh, De Palma isn't known for dealing with female characters with particular sensitivity. Let's just put it that way. Right. Like there's, in Carrie, there's sort of like a an abstract fascination with the bizarre, tortured kid. Um, Sisters is like really. Have you ever seen Sisters? I haven't. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's really weird. It uses yeah. tr- like what's interesting is De Palma. In the 70s, there was a lot more of the split screen experimentation sort of stuff going on. Whereas here, as you can see with Carlito's Way, there's a lot more of the twisting to the Dutch camera angle or having the disorienting camera movement sort of stuff. He he does change and evolve in those sorts of ways, um, which I think is very interesting. Um, But yeah, like I, I, I would almost wonder now as we're talking about it, if Penelope Ann Miller is her character is if Gail is just a victim of the fact that De Palma doesn't know what to do with her because she's not a uh, psychopath. (laughs) Like, yeah, she's, she's, she's an emotional anchor for Carlito and De Palma is almost like, I don't want an anchor. I want to get on with the crazy (laughs) gun fights and stuff. So I, I think, Maybe it's just the fact that De Palma in general, again, basing this on the few films I've seen, you could, and again, this is going to sound meaner than I mean it to be, but he might be an example of style over substance, where he is so into Mm. the art form and what it's capable of visually that he's, he doesn't care, like, even Mission Impossible, which is a film I love so much, it's not an emotional, and it's not intended to be, but there's no sense yeah. of, like, you're not invested emotionally, and De Palma doesn't care about the emotional journeys of the characters. He just wants to wow you and excite you and and thrill you. And between that, and then even, like you said, Carrie, which is a film that also doesn't feel like, doesn't ring emotionally true. It just has some real powerhouse moments and some great, great stuff. But it's, yeah. I wonder if that's just – I haven't seen enough, like I said, but, like, I wonder if that's just De Palma's thing is he's not as into, like, emotional journeys. He just is kind of like everything is there to serve his visual sensibilities as a director. Yeah, I you know, I, I will say I'll, I'll catch it, I guess, a little a little softer than that and just say that he's – he's sort of like a, a, a pop culture artist, right, where yeah. he's not – I and I'm saying this in a very complimentary sort of way. I mean this in a very complimentary sort of way. He lacks pretension. He's mm. going to do stuff, he's going to play with it, but he's not going to torture himself over getting it perfect. Like he's not Kubrick and he's not right Nolan who shoots every frame. Like De Palma really seems like the type of guy where it's like, I need some insert shots, get the second unit in here. Right. right. Like, as opposed to no one's like, I have to be there for every, every setup. Um, so I, I think that, I think that what it is, is that he's incredibly gifted and he is an artist, but he's not, um, yeah, he's just not going to torture himself 
at it. He's going to try things, and if it works, great. And if it doesn't, he's moved on already sort of thing. Right. I get what you're saying. Do you think like it, this all comes down to like Carlita's way when it was first released, uh, my understanding is it wasn't particularly beloved. It wasn't super well yeah. received. It didn't do great at the box office. Uh, some of this, I think, is merited. Like some of it, I think, is in the content of the film and the things we've been discussing. But how much of it do you think is De Palma said something really funny where he was like, I just made. I don't remember the name of the film, but he'd made something that critics didn't love. Al Pacino had just raising won the Cain? Oscar. I don't know if it was that. I want to say it was like um, Carly was I don't know how close it was. was bon- Bonfire of the Vanities. That's what it was. You're right. That's I it. didn't see that either. He got so slaughtered he, for that one. Yeah, he got slaughtered for that. So De Palma apparently, like not long after the film premiere, or right when it was about to premiere, he was basically like, guy, like, look, I'm coming off a bad film. Pacino just won the Oscar. People are going to be looking for reasons to not like this movie. And based on the reaction to it, it does seem to be the case. How much of that do you think is merited? And how much of that do you think is based on the times? Because this is right after Goodfellas, too. So it's like Scorsese had just (laughs) released, you know, one of the ultimate mob movies of all time. And like, do you think Carlito's Way is being held up against that? It, It almost inevitably will be but it also makes sense why time has been kind to carlito's way but i wanted to get your thoughts on that as somebody who saw it in theaters and has seen its reputation kind of shift and change the years i think that that's a very good insight because goodfellas is a taste changer goodfellas had a lot of imitators come after it carlito's way isn't trying to imitate it Mm -hmm. and so it is and i'm going to purposely do this just to make you uncomfortable okay (laughs) It's the Zack Snyder film in the Marvel universe of mob movies in the 1990s. Oh <laughs> okay. I was going to say it's the Blade Runner being released the same year as E.T. But, you know, let's go with the Snyder because, of course. Because I just like setting I, – I like making you uncomfortable is why. And undoubtedly there's somebody, there's somebody out there listening to this that just – I'm sorry for what happened to your phone or whatever you're listening to this they just, on. They're unsubscribing. They're yeah. writing the one star review. <laughs> Can't cancel me now. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I do. I think that, um, I mean, my brother and I enjoyed this when we first saw it. We were like, yeah, we dig it. Like, and I, I have sort of the same reaction now where it's like, this is not one of the great works, but I'll come back to this. Like I, there are so many things about this that I do enjoy. And when he does, when De Palma goes for the bombast, like you said, you know, the, the, the red room and the, the grand central station chase are just phenomenal. Like that is worth the price of admission alone. I'd have paid the five bucks to see just those two things. And the fact that I get like a good Penelope Ann Miller performance and also some really interesting stuff going on with Viggo Mortensen for Pete's sake. Yeah. Viggo Um, Mortensen's in the movie. That was very exciting for me. Well, and you know, what's my, my, uh, my captain, my King. You know, what's funny is Viggo Mortensen was after this movie, he was one of those actors that I looked for in the credits and I knew his, like, I, you know, I, I was that, that special kind of, of film nerd back then who, like, I knew who J.T. Walsh was and Vigo Mortensen. And, like, I knew to look right. for their name sort of thing. <laughs> um, you know, and ugh, pulled those dumb cards out all the time. But, like, you know, he would show up <laughs> in things. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember him from Car- Carlito's Way. Right. So imagine being in the situation where you've seen him in Carlito's way. You've seen him in daylight with Sylvester Stallone. You've seen him in the prophecy with Christopher Walken. And then he's Aragorn. It's like, wait, yes. what just happened? What reality Whoa. did I just step into? I mean, it was great to see. And he's, he's, he's very effective in his very small role, but I, I get the sense he and Pacino had a lot of fun. Like, cause Pacino's like smacking him around and it looks mm-hmm. like there's like, some legit hits like he's connecting he's yanking his hair around like it's like i and and vigo mortensen is just a badass and like he he is such a champ and such an incredible actor but you get the feeling that pacino's like look i want to go i want to go all the way with this and vigo's like dude hit me just punch me in the face right now i i think that there is um something to be said though because that's the type of thing that's the type of acting thing that pacino's generation brought that whole, um, you know, um, 
oh, I forget his name. It, 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 the, the guy who taught Stanislavski, who, who, mm. um, the, the method actor who also taught Brando and everything like that. Lee, uh, uh, I, why can't I think of his name? He's in the Godfather part know. two. Um, it's, he's the guy. He's yeah. The guy. Oh, why? You know what? This is age. I can't, I can't recall. I used to be able to recall <laughs> his name at the drop of a hat anyway, but it's that sort of, it's almost, it's informed by that. Is it a, Str- it's Lee Strasberg. That's it. Yeah. But it, okay. um, it's informed by that sort of stage presence sort of thing, that right. physicality that you have to have, um, which, you know, they made fun of in the one single decent episode of Friends where Gary Oldman was like, you have to spit when you talk. And that's how <laughs> that's how you get emotion in there. But, you know, I mean, a scene like that works because both actors are willing to go all the way with it mm. and say, OK, yeah, rough me up. I tell you know, okay, just tell me what you're going to do so I know how to react to it. You're right. And don't, you know, hey, don't go too far with it, sort of thing. And establishing those boundaries and rehearsing it and getting it there so that these scenes that do work, there's a very um, you know, live theater sort of feel to them. And I think that that's what adds to the authenticity of the film as a whole. Definitely. I yeah. agree. Well, is there any are there any other big moments you want to call out or things we haven't talked about that you feel merit mention in this episode before we wrap things up? I would have never gone to a party at Kleinfeld's. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> no, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, am I supposed to like this guy? Because this is the one of the weirdest places I've ever been. But yes. uh, but no, I think. There's a part of me that at some point would love to go. I have I have Blowout. I haven't seen that, but I, I it's another one. I Carlito's Way, Blowout. I own a couple of the Palma films that I just haven't watched. And I would like to at some point go back and maybe watch Sisters and kind of get more of a feel for him. Because a lot of the stuff I've seen, like I said, Mission Impossible is what I'm most familiar with. And that's kind of in, I think of that as part of that franchise, even though it's so clearly a De Palma film like it is it's got his identity his yeah. stamp all over it but like that being said I would like to go and just kind of see what the, I feel like Carlito's Way gives me a taste of it too and I've seen Carrie and I remember bits of the Untouchables but like it would be fun to go through his stuff and just kind of see like all right so this is kind of his thing because like I said I, he feels like a guy who thankfully has he works with good material but he does strike me as somebody who's like all about style and technique more than substance typically yeah. not in a bad way but he is very much like it's almost like the substance gets in the way of what he wants to do cinematically and with with his camera yeah. and with the editing that's that's and he fair. tries he wants to craft all of those those emotions in the cutting room versus like through the script like he's like ah script we'll work on we'll it's fine we'll get we'll cut it and we'll make the audience feel these things but it would be fun to go through his filmography at some point i think i agree i agree i think that would be fun Maybe we maybe we need to put together a special project like that here on the Nerd Party. Who knows? I think that would be fantastic. So, I guess uh, what do you think? Final ratings? You want to do final ratings? I mean, it has to be yeah. Final cheese, ratings. Cheesecakes, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, it has to be cheesecakes. <laughs> so, um, how many how many cheesecakes would you give Carlito's Way? Four out of five. I think okay. this is just a really well crafted. Not again. I know I, I know I keep sort of like backhand complimenting it. It's not it's not one of the great works, but there's enough in here that it's entertaining. Like it kept me engaged yeah. the whole time. So yeah, I, that's a four. I think it's a it's definitely a good rating. I'd probably I think I'll give it a solid three. Like it is it's it's that again, like you said, it sounds backhanded, but I I do want to be clear. I think the stuff that didn't work for me was the character and the like the lack of that emotional resonance when it clearly wanted to go in that direction but also kind of maybe De Palma just didn't care enough to go in that direction but that being said like you said I enjoyed it it's well worth a watch it's it has so many like I said things that should be shown in a classroom as like this is how you craft suspense this is how editing can make a scene that was maybe dull very exciting and and edge of your seat so there's so much here to work for I think if I knock it for anything it's just this the story and the relationships don't quite hit the marks that they want to hit but i enjoyed it overall and i thank you for introducing it to me you're welcome you're welcome now can we go on that boat ride i just you know, just as one <laughs> wait time, a second I just need your wait help. a second no 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 no. I, i'm not going on any boat rides but i might 
I might go on a couple podcasts. There's some podcasts that you are a part of that I might consider going on, but definitely with uh, with lots of people and, <laughs> and not in the middle of a body of water Always where smart. no one can see. <laughs> but tell very, us about these podcasts. Very John. smart. Uh, you know, you can find me right here on uh, the Nerd Party Network uh, on House Lights, where, I don't know, maybe De Palma can sneak in and you can come on and uh, have a little fun yes, with us, man. please. You know? And uh, you can uh, hear me on Aggressive Negotiations, which is a Star Wars podcast of a different stripe. We're not covering the uh, the typical stuff. We're having a lot of fun with it. We do some deep dives that are a whole lot of fun. And I do have to say, I've had a lot of fun. There is a short run podcast that I did with my co-host, Matthew Rushing, from Aggressive Negotiations over on the TFM network called Snyder Cuts, where in anticipation of Zack Snyder's Justice League coming out, we went through and we watched all of his films. And, and we also watched all of his music videos and short films, too. So This is why Snyder had to be a part of this. Episode. He just had to bring Snyder into this, didn't you? I, you know, I will say that it was an interesting journey. And I encourage people to go over and uh, check it out. It, it was it, it was kind of it was kind of fun. But uh, speaking of places that are fun, it's usually not where you are. But where can people find you? <laughs> people can find me as places that are fun. As, and I was about to say, oh well, I'm on Twitter, and I'm like, Twitter is that fun? I don't know. No, Sometimes it is not. It's fun. Most of the time, it's a dumpster fire. But you can find me there <laughs> at Yeshondor Man. Um, I am also on Instagram and Letterboxd, uh, just Shondor Man. You can find me there as well. I'm here hosting Missing Frames every other week. And uh, yeah, I would love to make an appearance on House Lights. I think there may be some appearances coming up that uh, I'm very excited Ooh. about. So uh, definitely check those out. Lots of great stuff happening on the nerdparty.com. But John, thank you again. Thank you for introducing me to Carlito's Way. I can finally check off a movie that I've owned for years and uh, I, I feel a little bit, I think I can sleep <laughs> a little better at night. So thank you for that. Thank you to everyone for listening and uh, we will see you at the movies. Bye.